I welcome you, brothers and sisters, to the Show of Fire live conference of the year 2022. All thanks, praise, glory, honor be to our God in Jesus' name. So one more time, brothers and sisters, welcome to the Show of Fire live conference. Uh, in this year, 2022, our vision remains the same, to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life and to manifest Christ and his abundant and eternal life in all aspects of life. That remains our vision. And by the grace of God, we'll continue to pursue this vision with everything and in everything that we do. And the Almighty God will help all of us to fulfill this lofty uh, vision of God. Because I believe this is very important for all humankind, especially to manifest Christ. There are many of us who are Christians and say we are Christians, but we have not paid enough attention to what it really means to be a Christian. Uh, as we have written in that uh, mini book, a Christian is one that is like Christ. And that's why that vision is simply to manifest Christ. So a Christian, you can say, is therefore one who manifests Christ. So we're implying there that we really want to be who we are and who we say we are. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Following this, beloved brothers and sisters, our theme for this year, 2022, is abundant life in Christ. Uh, you find that in John chapter 10, verse 10b, but we'll come to that. Last year, our theme was greater victory, and we saw the greater victory of God in our lives and our families. That's why we are here today, because God granted us victory. Despite all that happened in the year 2021, God gave us victory, and we are here today. Glory be to God. So for this year, therefore, with the theme, Abundant Life in Christ Jesus, our cardinal scriptures are, one, John chapter 10, verse 10b. John chapter 10, verse 10b. Jesus spoke there and said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. I would like you to open, as we mentioned these scriptures, and read with us. The second scripture is 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. And then the third scripture is Psalm 91, verses 1 through 11. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, verse 4, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, abundant life in Christ Jesus. So if you pay attention to these two scriptures, it will hit you clearly that, number one, God indeed has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness while we are here in this world. God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness, as you can see there in verse 3. And this is all embedded where? In Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. So this is what we will be exploring in this year, that we will all enjoy, manifest Jesus Christ and his abundant and eternal life that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll go deeper into these texts. Now, with these two scriptures, John chapter 10, verse 10b, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundant. And 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. I, I, I believe that our faith indeed can really be built up, and our faith should indeed really be built up. Let's study this word 
Till Jesus Christ is a reality in our lives. And so let it be to us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, following this is Psalm 91, verses 1 through 11. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 11. Last year, we were looking at Psalm 91, verses 7 to 10. And uh, by the Spirit of God, it is time for us to add. And even then, I had told us, please keep reading the whole of Psalm 91 for yourself. I've been led that we add at first, I even said verse, from verse 1 to 10, I was just praying and I was led to add verse 11. And I've told us why we need to, again, also study, pray with Psalm 91 till it becomes our reality. It's because of the times that we are in. Talking about the times that we are in, I will not say much now, but please, I encourage you to go and listen again to the understanding the times, understanding the times that I've shared with us. And as we go on, I will perhaps add a few more. But please don't drop your guard. All the people who will be telling you prophecy for the new year is like this, is like that. <laughs> know that even the Bible had forewarned us. What you need to know is in the scripture. Yes, but of course, the Lord speaks specific things in the season. So this season, uh, I have said what I received. And I've also told you that things aren't changing. Rather, things are going to go more, uh, uh, more severe, more intense. The word, again, if you want to hear it, is roller coaster. That's the word. Dramatic uncertain changes. So on that note, let me again speak forth. Whatever you have to do this year, please do it quickly. Don't wait for the second half. I say that again, whatever you have to do, whatever you desire to do, whatever you plan to do, do it quickly this year. Don't wait for the second half of this year. I will leave it there. Let's move on. So because of this, we want to kickstart this year by dedicating ourselves, dedicating our services, dedicating everything we are to God. That's the focus of today. So I am believing God for greater impacts in Jesus' name. Say that amen with me. I'm believing God that you and I will make greater impacts in this year to the glory of God. And I want to remind us again that only the doers and not the hearers only are blessed. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. Only the doers and not the hearers only. You know, some people, they are hearers only. They want to hear new things. In fact, if you repeat what you preached last week, you have lost them. They are gone. And those are people who never get anything, actually, because they just... In hearers only. Paul, in writing a number of the letters, he will say, for me to repeat the same thing to you, for me to repeat the same thing to you is not a burden. He said, is, but rather it is for emphasis. Even God, when he wants to make emphasis, he will call somebody even three times. Like when he calls Samuel, 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 he repeated it three times. Okay, but let the point be made. And let's take it very seriously. I know how much I've been telling us, write something down. And I know how many people are struggling doing that. And I know how many people don't believe in doing that at all. And that is why their lives remain the same way. And they will continue to complain. You know, the popular saying that says, if you do the same thing, you will get the same result. There are different versions of that. Even the Bible has its own version, which is part of what we're talking about here. So James chapter 1 verse 22 says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Verse 25 says, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, 
This one will be blessed in what he does. Do you desire to be blessed in the year 2022? Do you desire to make greater impacts? Do you desire to enjoy the abundant life in Christ Jesus? Then make up your mind that you're going to change this year by not being the hearer only, but being the hearer and doer of the word. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to challenge us and make this bold assertion, which I often make. If you don't do something, God will do nothing. So I pity those who sit down to pray fast and all that. And after that, they fail to take action. Nothing will happen. Hear me. You say, ah, pastor, I thought prayer is the master key. Yes, prayer is the master key. But there are different prayers. For example, I pray for the sick to be healed, and the sick should be healed instantly. And I have seen the sick healed many times. And I will cast out the devil from the demon possessed, and I will terminate the works of the devil by prayer. But when I want something to come to me, when I pray, God says, go after it. Go and do it. So David gave us the example. And that's why that my assertion, boldly, if you don't do something, God will do nothing. In fact, even the prayer itself is an action, isn't it? Praise the name of the Lord. It's doing something. And you have to know what is appropriate at what time to do. But you've got to do something. Do something according to the will of God. Do something according to the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I know some people just thought today we will come in, we will just cry to God, and then things begin to happen in their lives. That's what a lot of people like to do, and that's why many are being deceived today. Some are told, come, we will pour anointing oil upon your head, and then everything will happen in your life. There is a place for anointing oil, and you can go study the life of Jacob if you want to understand the anointing oil. Uh, and then come back to the New Testament where the anointing oil is mainly used for the sick. But if you want to take the entire scripture, go back to Jacob, and then you can study and you will understand how to apply it for yourself. But again, emphatically, anointing oil is not the Holy Spirit. Anybody who tells you the anointing oil is the Holy Spirit is deceiving you. It is not the Holy Spirit. It has its own duty. And again, the anointing oil used in the law, in the law of Moses, is totally different from what we have today and what we're talking about today. And as I've always told us, the principles, yes, you can use. But that anointing oil, you can study it and know what it was. It was special. In fact, it was not to be put on anybody else. <laughs> it was not to be put on anybody at all. So those who are doing anointing oil should study more and know and what anointing oil means and how it should be used today and what should it be used. Okay, uh, that's uh, enough for that. So dedication, I was saying, so some people thought it would just be calm and then everything will happen. In fact, I had the opportunity of asking people a question. I said, uh, Christians, anointing versus the teaching of the word, which one is greater and which one do you prefer? Which one do you choose? If you look at many people today, you know they will easily choose anointing. And in fact, there are many people who say pursue anointing, pursue anointing. The answer is you need both, actually, but you don't pursue anointing. Hello, anointing is given by the Holy Spirit. What you should pursue is the word, the teaching of the word. 
It is the teaching, the understanding of the word that gives you everything. You're going to gain the anointing by understanding the word. So you need both. But it is the word that you understand, apply, and make it a reality in your life that will manifest the anointing that is given to you. Praise the name of the Lord. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus Christ said, this scripture is fulfilled this day before your eyes. And what was that scripture? That God has anointed him, Jesus Christ. Let's go there to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted. Let's read it together. And then Acts chapter 10, verse 38. So remember, meanwhile, we're going to dedication. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Did you see that? The first thing. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And you remember in Acts chapter 1, Jesus said, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, has come upon you. So the Holy Spirit has been given, and the Holy Spirit is then to teach us the word, to reveal the truth of Jesus, reveal Jesus to us more and more. So we need both the anointing and the teaching of the word. Let's get back to where we're going then. This is the point, is that we have to take the action that is required of us to take in this year, 2022, in order to see the manifestation of the abundant life that God has given to us through his son, Jesus Christ. So I want to challenge you again, my brothers and sisters, that if you don't do something, what will happen? God will do nothing. In fact, another brother, when I said that, replied and said, something will do you. <laughs> if you don't do something, God will do nothing. And something, or but something will do you. I pray for you. I pray that in this year, 2022, the Almighty God will stir us up by his spirit, and we will do that which God has ordained for us to do, and we will enjoy the abundant life that God has given to us in Jesus' name. So make up your mind, brothers and sisters, to do something this year. I want to remind us of David and Goliath. That was a big challenge facing the entire Israel, and David in particular, because David has already been anointed king. At times, we miss the context why David had to fight. David has been anointed king. And here was Goliath coming to take over his kingdom, take over Israel, even though he has not yet been announced the king. But he knew if this kingdom is taken over, then where is, is he going to be king? Again, talking about anointing versus the world. But David knew what God has promised him. So having been anointed, he went forth to take action. David with no military training, facing a giant, experienced warrior. But David had to do something because he knew that it is in the little actions that he takes or will take that the Almighty God will bless him. According to the scripture we have just read in James chapter 1, verse 25. Let me repeat it again so it will sink in. He said, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So David decided, I'm going to throw the stone first and let God do what God alone can do. And when David threw the stone, Goliath fell. I pray for you that every action you take this year your Goliath will fail. Whatever that challenge was that has been standing in front of you, hindering you from attaining and enjoying the full life that God has given you, that 
Goliath will fall. That challenge will fall in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So what are you going to do? Three simple ones and the rest you will develop. Number one, what you should do. Number one is dedicate your life to God. Dedicate your life to God. I dedicate my life to God. In this year, 2022, start by dedicating your life to God. Number two, write down your plan and commit it to God. Commit it to God. And your plan should also form part of your dedication. Number three, start doing what you plan to do. Is that simple? This year, whatever you, you plan to do, again, I told us, do it quickly. Do it quickly. Don't wait for second half. So dedication, dedication, which is our number one action. And let this dedication not just be today and then it's ended continually. Dedication. What does it mean? Dedication is derived from the word dedicate. To dedicate means to devote time and effort to a particular task or purpose. To devote time and effort to a particular task or purpose. And so when we say we are dedicating our lives to God, we are saying that we are committing our all, handing over all, and making God our total focus for this year 2022. Glory be to God. Quick example of dedication in the Bible. Let's start from the Old Testament. In 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 28. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 28. There we see Samuel being dedicated to God. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 28. Are you there with me? Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worship the Lord there. Thank you. Is there anybody with uh, NIV? NIV. If you have NIV, please read it for me. It says, so now I give him to the Lord mm -hmm. for his whole life he will be given over to the Lord and he worshiped the Lord there. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the word there, lent, given, Dedicate is all uh, the same word. So this was Samuel, um, Anna, if you look from verse 27, he said, for this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him, 28. Therefore, I also have lent him, given him, dedicated him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. So they worshiped the Lord there. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's one example, giving. So it means to give your all, everything to him. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, we see another example. It was an example of Solomon who dedicated uh, the temple that he built to God. If we look at verse 1 through 5, specifically verse 5 because of time, verse 5, let's just... King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. They dedicated, they handed it over. So that's why when we also say we are dedicating a child to God, we are giving to God. So what are we here to do today is to give ourselves, our time, our service, everything that concerns us. One will say, God Almighty, take over in this year 2022 and be the one in front, be the one leading, be the one above, beneath, all around us, that everything we do will be to your glory. Isn't that a wonderful thing to do? Read two more scriptures and then we pray. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, we can teach dedication for a month. Uh, so let's just suffice. For today, we want to do the action. 2 Timothy chapter 2, we want to read from verse 20 and 21. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood 
and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So when we dedicate ourselves, when we give ourselves, God will take over and prepare us for his good work. This year, make up your mind, as we have said. Say, what should you do? Number one, dedicate yourself to God. Number two, write down your plan and commit your plan to God. Number three, take the action. Faith without works is dead. Take the action. So give yourself and your work all to God. That's what we have come to do here today. Make up your mind that you're going to be a vessel of honor. Oh, well, isn't it wonderful to be a vessel of honor? That vessel that God uses for special purposes. Look at what the Bible says here. It says, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. So make yourself a vessel of honor. How? Verse 21 tells us, it says, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Well, what is that latter? Verse 22 tells us. He said, flee also youthful love, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Watch yourself, brothers and sisters. Change your ways. If you keep doing the same thing, you get the same result. If you keep refusing to painstakingly write down your plan, develop a strategy for the year, and dedicate your life and your plan to God, you will get the same result. If you do the same thing you did last year, you will get the same result, perhaps not, because this year will be different from last year. There will be different challenges. That's why if uh, you do the same things, actually, you don't get the same result in life. You deteriorate. You have to continually make improvements. So we are here to make improvements. Glory be to God. Our last scripture, and then we will pray. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I hope you're writing down these scriptures. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Present yourself. So this is dedicate yourself. Give yourself to God as a living sacrifice. A sacrifice is that which is offered to God and not taken back or offered to the gods. You know, just talking about the example, uh, physical example that people do. So when you give something as a sacrifice, you don't take it back. So when you give yourself to God, God owns you totally. That's what dedication means. Beloved brothers and sisters, we want to dedicate our lives, ourselves, our everything, our services to God this year. And as we looked at the example of Solomon, I want us to start the prayer with the prayer of, that Solomon prayed in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 40, when he dedicated the temple to God. And you know, we are the temple now. We are the temple of God. The Bible says it very clearly that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14, verse 23, that the Father and, the, and himself, they will come and make their home in us. So Christ dwells in us. Praise the name of the Lord. Second Chronicle chapter 6. Are you there with me? Because it's time to pray. If we look at verse 40. Now, my God, I pray, let your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength, 
Let your priest, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed. Remember the mercies of your servant, David. Ha! Ah, we can decode this prayer in today's uh, context uh, for hours, but just put yourself in the place of the priests, the anointed, because you are the anointed vessel and also the temple, okay, of God. When you take the position in those three dimensions, it will be clear to you this prayer. So God, let your eyes be. First of all, God, come into my life. Oh, arise, O oh Lord God, to your resting place. That's the temple. You must be the resting place, the house of God. The presence of God, the glory of God must be intense in your life this year in the mighty name of Jesus. And then he asked for strength upon his priests, so yourself, and to be clothed with salvation. So no more sin and let your sins rejoice in goodness, the goodness, the mercy, the favor of God. And then it says, do not turn away your face the face of your anointed. So never any time that you will not be in the presence of God and say, remember the mercies of your servant David. So he invoked the covenant. So for us, the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you now with me? It's time to pray. But before we pray, we will just spend, because our prayer won't be long, we'll just spend time now looking at have you written your plan? What are your goals for this year? Want to reflect for a few minutes. So feel free, want to reflect. And maybe you have some points, you have a prayer request. You have something to say, look, let's do, add this to this dedication prayer because I'm going to lead us in the dedication prayer. Um, then you can, you can speak up now. Everything about us, that's just what we are here to do. Now that you understand, I ask us to write our plans. Make a plan, make a plan. I keep challenging us, make a plan. I have mine and uh, usually you will bring a copy of that, your plan, and raise it before the Lord. So do you have a plan? Yeah? Just some thoughts. I told us when you want to study something deeply or you want to frame something so you can work on it, use the three part questions. What, why, and how. What, why, and how. When you want to take that into a plan, then you add the second W, when. So what? why, how, and when. How and when are very important. So what is it that you want to achieve this year? So with all that we have studied, you must know that number one is for you to be a vessel of honor, a vessel that will glorify God. That's the first thing that your whole plan should be about. But don't just write it down. I want to be a vessel of honor and that's it. Go follow through. What does it mean for you to be a vessel of honor? Why is this important? Write it down. Then bring those two parts to translate this into action. How are you going to achieve this thing that you have said? What it is, why it is important, how are you going to achieve it? Write it down. And then the last part, when? Put the time. So what, why, how, and when will help you put a simple plan, strategy for yourself to work on. Okay, I'll pause here and we'll spend the next 
private uh, few minutes to hear your own thoughts. If you have anything to say, anything to add, please feel free to open the line and speak. What do you have? I've just shared uh, one. I can share some that I've noted down. At least key headlines. I've told you key headlines you must cover. I've just told you one. Set your goal to be a vessel of honor, to glorify God. Uh, another headline is the areas of impact that you will make greater impact. How are you going to make that impact? Another headline is around your family, around your career, around your network, your relationship, around your finance. What is that your career, school, political, um, ministry, like in terms of preaching, church, all that? What is that career, business? Or oh, you must set goals and write down the details what you're going to do. Okay, Brother Dara, go ahead. Good morning, sir. Good yes, morning, good sir. morning. Okay, so, sir, um, I picked up something from, I think one time when we were talking, you shared a few things. For me, aside the other things like family, uh, finances, uh, spiritual area, personal development, I think two places that I really want to pay attention this year a bit more is specific details in the area of business and um, personal development, which covers spiritual uh, life. Now, the question that I want to ask on the business side is, uh, I know once you mentioned that every person to succeed at something should be able to have a benchmark, like what is the, what do you, what's the minimum requirements uh, that you need, what the minimum requirement that you need to achieve success in that particular uh, business. And, and it will give you clarity to know when you succeed and what you need to make that success happen. Now, I want to turn that into a, a, a to use the ask question in, the, in line with spiritual development. What are like the basic things a successful Christian should do every day to just you know, be in that place where your spiritual life can be grounded and it just have this consistent upward trajectory. That's the question I want to answer. Excellent uh, question. Um, yes, uh, trying to link minimum requirement for success to uh, a Christian life, uh, success as a Christian. For I want to. Uh, turn that minimum requirement for a Christian rather and call it victorious daily living for a Christian. Victorious daily living. So, and you can actually check this out. Uh, growing up as a young convert, um, that's one book that was helpful for me, Victorious Daily Living. And it was from the archive of John Wesley. It was from the archives of John Wesley. So you may search it up and it remains the same. Uh, the, people make big deal out of uh, this simple life Christ has given us to live. So I will not, I don't think I can exhaust all here, but because you have asked and it's very important Number one starts with you making up your mind to live for God, just what we have said. There are many people who say they are Christian, they want to live for God, but they have not made up their minds. <laughs> and, and that's what we are here for and what we are still talking about. Make up your mind that you want to live for God, the true God and nothing else. That's the starting point. Number two, when that, that, while that seems simple, you really need to sit down and say, I want to live this life for God. And you look at the things and the ways you have been doing things before. So number two is the steps we have provided in the who is a Christian. Again, talking about people taking these things and practicing it rather than just think there are other ways. There aren't other ways. So the steps you take to, number one, give your life to God through Jesus Christ. That is genuinely being born again. You repent. And number three, so having repented is 
to also then go through that same step. That number four gets you into the space of doing. So that is develop your daily routine, which starts one with your quiet time. And quiet time is about prayer, reading the Bible, prayer and reading your Bible. That's the, and then the third arm of that, which I will call number five, is seek to understand the basic principles of the faith, of the faith. You must come to a personal understanding by the scripture, the studying of the Bible. That's what you do, which is number five. You must continue to study the Bible and pray and learn in fellowship, in teaching to, to the point that you know what you know. That's the point. And what you know is all about Jesus Christ. There is nothing more. So you must come to that understanding of who Jesus really is in your life and how that translates into different aspects of your life and live. If you do this, you will have a victorious Christian life. It will only be the details under these five headings that you expand. If you want to add number six, it, which is changing, continuous improvement, continuous change. I think that's part of number five. Is also part of number two, which is repentance from sin and all that. So those are the ones I would say. Um, so under number five, of course, I've added that that's where you fellowship as we are. You learn, you uh, interact, and you study by yourself as well. So I think your question has taken all the time. I believe that will help everyone. Thank you. Now we go into prayer, everyone. So as a group, let's go to prayer. We want to dedicate. I believe you have your plans for the year. If you haven't, just write the key headings of areas that you seek and that you're going to take those four guides that I gave us to do the plan. So let us Pray. Let us pray. We want to pray. We want to dedicate ourselves and our time to God. Like you've seen here. Let's pray together and say, Heavenly Father, in this year 2022, I dedicate my body, soul, and spirit to you. I dedicate my whole life to you. I dedicate my businesses to you, my services, my time. All that I am, Lord, I dedicate to you. Heavenly Father, according to your word, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, I ask, Lord, make me a vessel of honor. Make my body your temple indeed, and make me your vessel of honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Father God, I dedicate my whole being to you. Father, I dedicate my whole being to you. In this year, 2022, I dedicate everything, everything, everything about me. I dedicate to you, dedicate my, my whole house to you. I dedicate my business, my career, my work, everything concerning me, I dedicate to you. Heavenly Father, in this year, make me a vessel of honor to you. According to your word, according to your word, I present my body as a living sacrifice to you. I dedicate my all. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And tell him again as a heavenly father, in the name of Jesus, I dedicate my services to you. That everything that I will do in this year, 2022, God, let it bring you glory. Let it bring you glory. Everything I will do in the year 2022. Let it bring you glory. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. So number one, we dedicate ourselves to him, God, that God takes over our lives. God dwells in us. God pours his spirit upon us, makes us his vessel of honor, and we set our minds to glorify him. And now number two, we hand over our services. Your service includes everything, your career, your uh, education, what you will do, your business, part of your services, your preaching, your ministry, like uh, myself, 
and those who are in this line, everything dedicated to God. Lord, I dedicate all my services to, to you. And you tell him that my services, your services will bring you glory. Let my services bring you glory, almighty God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. That's the second dimension. Remember, we are using Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 41, as I interpreted to you to pray. Then we go to the third dimension. The third dimension. Tell him, Heavenly Father, as your son, as your daughter, through Jesus Christ, you have made me a king and a priest. Clothe me with your righteousness and your glory. Clothe me with your righteousness and your glory. In this year, 2022, oh, I have given myself to you as your son, as your daughter. Through Jesus Christ, I have become a priest and a king unto God, in the kingdom of God. Father, clothe me with your righteousness, clothe me with your glory, and let no shame be found in me, no sin be found in me, no shame, no sin be found in me. I dedicate and consecrate my entire being to you, O God. As a son, as a daughter, Lord, I dedicate all to you and I ask, Almighty God, clothe me with your glory and with your righteousness, with your righteousness and with your glory. Ah, I am a priest, I am a son, I am a king in the kingdom of God through my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, Father, clothe me with your righteousness and with your glory in this year, 2022. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And then the fourth part, which will be our final part, and then you will expand it. Ah, you're going to raise whatever you desire to God. And say, Heavenly Father, in this year, 2022, let my desires, according to your abundant life, according to your goodness, according to your power and your strength, be fulfilled in my life. And I dedicate my plans and my desires to you, O God. I dedicate my plans and my desires to you, Lord God Almighty. And let all my desires, my plans, according to the abundant life you have provided, given to me through Jesus Christ, my Lord, let all be fulfilled. Let all be fulfilled. Let all be fulfilled. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, let us pray together as a heavenly father. By the end of the year 2022, oh, let my life indeed bring you glory. And so, Lord, I thank you already for your glory, for all your blessings, for all your goodness upon my life, upon my family, upon my brothers and sisters. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father. We agree and we declare that this year, 2022, is our year of abundant life in Christ Jesus. And so let it be unto me, unto my family, and unto every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The Lord, brothers and sisters, I want to make the final prayer for you. That according to all these words of this prayer, of this teaching today, I dedicate myself, my life, and you, and we all rededicate our lives to the Almighty God in the name of Jesus Christ. And we agree that the Almighty God will do all that we have asked all that we desire in this year 2022 to be a vessel of honor unto him that he will use us for very special glorious services unto himself in the name of Jesus. You and your household, I and my household, we and our household, we shall shine forth in this year. We shall manifest the abundant life that God has given us through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.